Well, and good evening and welcome to New Community Church of Nuevo's Christmas Eve service. We uh, want to welcome those here in church worshiping together and those out on the internet worshiping around the world and maybe two doors down. But we want to thank you all for joining us. I ask those to rise and receive God's blessing for our service today. God greets us this way. Peace be with you all. As God welcomes us into his sanctuary, he blesses us all this evening as we gather together to celebrate the birth of the promised Messiah. We will go into our time of praise and worship. Um, everything will be sung a cappella. So I ask if anybody knows the starting notes on all of these, don't, feel, don't be afraid to get us kicked off. So uh, we will start now with, O come all ye faithful. <laughs> Second song is What Child Is This? What is it, sir? What child, child is this? So tonight, <coughs> the Advent season ends. We wait no longer. I get my mic off. How about now? Better? Okay. Tonight, the Advent season ends. We wait no longer. The great event for which we have waited with anticipation is happening. It's happened, actually. God's promise of a Redeemer is fulfilled. Christ Jesus is born. 
We light the Christ candle with praise to our God who brings joy to the world. From the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 4. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem with us from all the wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Will you join me in prayer? Lord Jesus Christ, tonight we celebrate your lowly coming down as a baby into Bethlehem. Even as we wait for your glorious appearing, on the clouds of heaven. We give thanks for your redeeming work. We thank you that it assures us of victory. The power of our, your spirit that enables us to say no to sin and yes to righteousness and for your love, which forgives us when we fail. Help us today to live and always as your sons and daughters. In your name we pray, amen. Our scripture passage for tonight's Advent service comes from Psalm 96. Psalm 96, this is the Psalm of David. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations for his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and he is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods and the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord God and strength. Glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and his peoples in faithfulness. <coughs> Just God's reading for this evening. When I look back at the Christmases in my life, I have... Many that will still bring me joy, even though they're past, even though the, the clothes are worn out, and the toys are all broken, and, and then all that stuff, you know, they still bring me some joy. You know, there's even more, I think, than the, than the bad broken toy ones that, and stuff like that would be the, the ones that feel like the third Tuesday after January. I mean, there's just no piss hands to them at all. And, and those are still in my life. But there's a couple... Well, there's one. There's one that really brings this joy to my life. It's one of my most joyous Christmases ever. It was back when I lived in the city of Wyoming. I was living the single life. It was back in 2001. This might have been before Rhonda. I think it was, if it was 2001. But I had my nice little bachelor apartment there in Wyoming, and I was in a fairly right place in my life, and I had a pretty nice neighborhood. I didn't mind having my family come to. So I called my mom up one day and I said, Mom, I'm going to have everybody at my apartment for Christmas. <clears throat> and her 
reaction was, oh. And I told her, I says, no, I says, I got a great turkey recipe that I want to try. I says, the apartment's nice and picked up. I want to do it in my, in my apartment. So mom, of course, her second reaction was, do you have enough room to fit all of this? I says, well, let's give it a shot. So she agreed. So fast forward, Christmas morning, the turkey comes out of the oven just perfect. And I only had to wait a few moments for my family to start showing up. And soon they did. Soon the tree started getting stuffed with presents. And, and soon the little the dining room table you have and your little kitchenette, dinette combo that started getting full of food. Suddenly the, the room started getting full of people. We had to make it work though, but the whole afternoon worked perfect. We were uncomfortable, sure. Everybody except my mom and my dad sat on the floor because there wasn't room for a chair. We all kind of crammed in there. We all squeezed into the pint sized living room that was big enough for me and nobody else. Sitting on the floor, open presents, laughing, joking, throwing a Christmas wrapper at each other, all that sort of stuff. But the reason I like that, that Christmas overall is because it's not about good food and good presents. That night to me was all about the joy that we created in a room that technically didn't have room for joy. And we made it work and we had a great time. And it was a success. And did I mention the turkey? Okay, you know what I mean? It was just a great night of blessing. Well, that Christmas was only about 20 years ago. It still brings that joy to my heart. It still brings something when I think about it. I still get a joy. Psalm 96 is all about <coughs> bringing our joy with all we've got. We, we have praise due to him for the things we are done. During the Christmas season, we have another great source of our joy. We, we like the white, the white candle, the joy candle. Christmas, we celebrate Jesus coming to the earth for us. As we read Psalm 96, you can seriously feel the joy. A little background on that passage. If you look up in your Bibles in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, David, David literally brought the ark back to its proper seat in Jerusalem. First Chronicles, this was a big deal. We know this, the ark's been gone for a while. It was the seat of the Lord. David brought it in, and this was the same time when you read the story about him dancing in his undergarments in front of the ark, full of mud, full of blood, and celebrating with this great joy. David instructed all the priests of the temple and the, excuse me, the musicians there, everybody who worked in the temple, to sing these exact words in Psalm 96. What I like about Psalm 96 is that it's first and foremost a master class on how to praise God. Within the 13 verses, <coughs> 13 verses 96, there are 13 exact examples of proper worship. Verse 1, sing to the Lord a new song, all the earth. One, two, three. Every day should be a joy, full day with a new song to sing about it all. Verse 2, proclaim his salvation every day. Preach the good news. Don't stop preaching and bring it out. It doesn't mean just do a little preaching every day, talk to somebody on the phone or, or meet somebody for coffee, but it also means the things you do that exhibit Jesus Christ in your life on the outside. Chapter 3, declare his glory among the nations. Praise him worldwide. There is not one spot on this world that should not be praising God for what he does for them. Verse 4, God is to be feared. And that doesn't just mean that God is scary. God needs to be feared. It's a respect thing. Kind of like in Exodus 20, verse 1. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. 
Verse 7, ascribe to the Lord, all you families and the nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe is another way of saying give to or acknowledge or give credit to or props to, you know, but I don't think I could ascribe somebody a bottle of water. But that's another one. Uh, verse 8, bring an offering and then back that offering with what you got. You know, back in the day they would bring, they would bring animals to sacrifice. In fact, on Sunday we're going to talk about Mary and a purification ritual. They were not wealthy enough, so she had ducks. But now we don't do that. Now our sacrifice is ourselves, amen? amen? Our sacrifice is the things we do to glorify God. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. When we worship the Lord, we need to remember that we are to feel honored because we are called into God's sanctuary and into his presence. Not many religions can say that. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Talked about that a little earlier. Preach it. Preach it worldwide. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea and all that is in it praise his name. Even the cosmos, even the universe has to praise God for what it's done and, and all its creation and its power. Let the fields be jubilant, every flower, tree, grain of wheat, blade of grass, bud, snow, flea, cardinal, whatever it is, joyfully and jubilantly, praise the Lord. You can't hold from it. You can't. No, you've got to praise and you've got to bring it. Let all creation rejoice before his Lord. So like I said, from animals to humans, planet Earth to the farthest off, not yet even discovered planet, that only God knows about it, should shout for joy to his name. Joy is a gift from God. And you know the very notable gift of joy that we can celebrate religiously at this time of year? The gift of Jesus Christ to the world, to humanity. Throughout Luke's account of the Christmas story, there are several instances of great joy that would fall right under the category that, that Psalm 96 is talking about. It's all surrounding the arrival of Jesus Christ. Like when the angel of Gabriel announced to Jesus, or the, announced the arrival of Jesus, Mary and Elizabeth both sang songs of praise, but what did Gabriel say when he first started? Hey, fear not, I bring you good news of great joy. Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, sang a song about the arrival of his uh, son, John, who would be John the Baptist. Mary and Elizabeth both sang beautiful songs of joy and special relationships, I guess, if you will, or fellowships they have with the Lord when you read their songs. In Luke 2, also, when, when Jesus was born, the angels showed up in the sky above the fields outside of Bethlehem, and the first thing they said is, Fear not, we bring you great noise, great news of good joy. And I love the end of that story. The shepherds find Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and they, they worship him because they realize who he is, because the angels open their eyes and God opened their hearts. But here's these unwanted that deal with sheep. Tell them the Lord, live outside. You gotta, you gotta take care of your sheep anyways. But these shepherds knew that once they got there, they were in front of something huge. And the end of the story, I love it because they leave happy, joyfully singing, praising God because they were the first in town to meet the new baby. As saved believers and followers, the cool thing is we've met him too. And because of the salvation we have received from Jesus, he is the reason for our joy. Our great shepherd gets us to be able to stand up and celebrate a little bit like the shepherds did. And Jesus, because of his salvation that we received because he died on the cross, gives us this reason to sing a new song of praise 
and glory that is heard everywhere we go, a new one every day, getting the sheep to sing with you, but whatever it is, we get that opportunity to be able to praise his name. It was impressed on me recently that the best way to change the hearts of the people around you are to let them see your, well, the word was peace, but I took peace out and I switched it for joy. So you're going to have to take credit for joy. Let them see your joy. We have to think about that. <clears throat> Do we have it in our hearts? Do we have it on the outside? Can people see the joy in you? Do people see the joy that we as Christians have in our life because of the birth of a baby who ended up growing up and dying for us? Can people see the joy in you, even if it's covered up? Or even if you happen to carry your joy a little bit deeper inside in people, can people still see it? You know, God's proof that you don't have to see it to believe it. But people still see that there's joy, maybe somewhere, maybe. But people, can, can people see it? Who or what is the greatest reason for your joy? If you were to look at our lives, I guess we first need to figure out, do we have it? That's the first look. Can we see it? Can people see it? Do we know it? But if we don't have it, do we know where to get it from? Which is can be a trap. Do we know how to get it? Do we know what to get it from? Where to get it from? And here is that big question. I'm going to repeat it again. Do we know how to obtain joy, obtain joy in our lives? Do we know how to obtain it so that we may in turn have the joy to go out and praise our Heavenly Father? A very, very clear street preaching version of that question is, do you know first and, most, first and foremost Jesus Christ as a never-ending source for your joy? Do you have what it is to be able to know him and follow him and have faith in his salvific power? That's really what all that, what I was leading up to. I should have just read the verse line, but, you know, yeah, do we know Jesus? Do we know how to get it? It's Christmas Eve. It's cold. There's snow on the ground. I can finally feel Christmas. I pray that we all leave here as a family that has love and peace, joy and hope in our hearts. And then when we wake up tomorrow morning in our brand new Christmas morning jammies that we were allowed to open the day before, that will all be so full of joy that it will be like a one-bedroom apartment with 20 people in it. It's going to be full to bursting, and then it's going to be more than we can handle. So because of Jesus Christ, our promised Messiah, let's take that joy that's filling us up, can't make us move, and let's spread it out tomorrow. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have confidence. You give us joy. You give us family to help fill us up with joy. And then you invite us into your family so that we may know joy eternally. And we thank you for that, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for the soon to arrive in the history of the world, the soon to arrive baby Jesus. You know, and we can look at the nativity story and we even go from there and we can start thinking in our minds about what Jesus is going to do. In fact, I kind of got hung up on that day, and it just kind of opened the brain and the heart. So we ask, dear Heavenly Father, that as we contemplate what Christmas is about and, and how Easter fits into that too, that you may open our hearts and minds and our eyes to the meaning of Christmas in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Start off our songs, The Silent Night. Excuse me.
mountain of Jesus Christ is born. When I was a seeker, I sought both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me, and He showed me the way. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. As we go out from here, with joy in our hearts, make sure that family, we also have the love, the peace, the hope in our hearts as well. Knowing that Jesus Christ was born for all of us, be blessed as we go out from here tonight so we may be adopted into his family. Go and show him. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. Let fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat. The sounding joy. Joy to the world that we sing. Let the earth receive her king. Joy to the world that we sing. Let the angel voices ring. He rules the world with truth and grace And makes the nations prove And glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders, wonders